Hey guys, Michael here from michaelsherlock.com. I'm here with the Sprint Epic 4G, and I just want to show you a little software tour of what you can expect when you first get the device and you first use it. So to start off, this is running TouchWiz. As you can see, you have a little dock down here with phone contacts, messaging, and applications. You can't change that little dock, and it uses TouchWiz uh, icons instead of the standard icons. Now for the application launcher, instead of dragging it up and having a vertical uh, way to look at all of your apps. This one's horizontal and it uses these dots at the top as well as scrolling. Now those dots represent what page you're on so you can easily see which app, which pages you're on and let's say you knew that a particular app was on page three, you don't have to scroll through all your pages depending on how many pages you have. You can just go straight to it. And that's the same thing with the home screens. You have seven home screens, seven dots, and you can go ahead and go through them. Uh, so I'll just show you what widgets and apps you get and shortcuts you get from the beginning. You get feeds and updates, which allows you to input your Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter settings and accounts. Uh, right now I only have Twitter, but you can go through and edit and um, post a status update from there. You have a Facebook widget that I have removed. You have your Sprint TV uh, up here, so you can use Sprint TV, which, by the way, is kind of weird because you'd think you'd be able to use Wi-Fi for this, but you can't. So you actually have to disable Wi-Fi to use it. Um, and it works relatively well. I mean, it's not the best out there, and some of the channels are kind of limited. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can show you a little bit more. But you have featured, recommended, recently played all channels and live, as well as on demand. So if you went to all channels, let's say you wanted to look at Fox Sports, You can go ahead and click on Fox Sports, um, but actually Fox Sports is an extra. So for about $9.99 a month plus tax, you can get 15 channels including MSNBC, Fox News, Nickelodeon, Spike TV, all that. So let's just quickly show you one that we don't have to pay extra for, so let's just, let's just show you ESPN Mobile TV, I guess. And again, you have to use 3G, so even if you have poor 3G, uh, you have to use 3G. It doesn't allow Wi-Fi, which is kind of a bummer. I mean, I guess it makes sense. They want to make sure that you're not using this on other Android phones, so that's their authentication method. But there are programmers out there that are pretty smart, so I don't know why this is the only method that they have for using it. And as you can see, we're still loading here. There we go. So then you have options for info. You can go back to the guide. That's the actual size, so it's kind of, kind of sad about how uh, little of a resolution you actually get. But then you can zoom, and as you can see, there is black bars on each side. So let's just go back. So that's Sprint TV. And then you have radio favorites and more, so you can work with your subscriptions or shop for Sports Extra. TV and Vivo, Playboy Channel, Mobile, Maximum, whatever all that stuff is, if you're into that. So let's go back to the home screen here, zoom out a little bit. Um, so that's Sprint TV. Sprint Football, basically you input your favorite team, uh, college or, or collegiate or pro, and then you can look at your team, you can look at scores and schedules, news and analysis, team pages, standings, this is for the NFL. And then you can go directly into your team and just look at your team news, divisional news. You can click on that. And then you can just click and look at an article. So apparently Plaxico Burris stole the punter Jeff Fiegel's number. You can read that article, which I have. Um, and again, you can do the same thing for college. Then you have Sprint Navigator for turn-by-turn -turn directions. I'm not really going to show you that today. Uh, as well as NASCAR Mobile, which is essentially almost the same thing as Sprint Football, but for NASCAR. We'll come back to the home page. Then you have ESPN, CNN, and YouTube. YouTube will open up the YouTube client for Android, so you can look at that, although the new HTML5 mobile website does a pretty good job. Speaking of mobile websites, ESPN, CNN, there's nothing special about them. They're just shortcuts uh, to the web. So on one hand, it's good you have a shortcut. You can easily uh, get to ESPN or CNN, but it's nothing special. It's not a web app. I mean, it's not an application. Then you have Buddies Now, so you can go here and click and uh, choose some buddies from your contact list that you really talk to the most, and then you can have sort of quick access to them from there. 
and that's all you get. Uh, built in, I mean, or standard, but you can do a lot of customization. So uh, you have multiple things you can add to the home screen, uh, shortcuts, folders, wallpapers. So I'll just show you how easy it is to change wallpaper. You can do gallery, live wallpapers, or wallpaper gallery. Uh, so these are the wallpapers that you'll get. Gallery would be photos that you've taken. But let's uh, choose a live wallpaper just to show you how easy it is. Let's choose ocean waves. It'll load it so we can see it. You can see when you click on it, it messes with the water. And now that's what it is. Now this will impact battery life, so that's just an FYI for you. But other things you can add, you can add Samsung widgets. So you can add a, a clock, Buddies Now, which I showed you, Feeds and Updates, which I showed you, a calendar clock, Yahoo Finance clock, and a program monitor. So this will just show you running programs, uh, and you can click on that to open up some information. It tells, it's telling me that we have 13 active applications, and you can see here that the browser is using uh, you know, 22.53 megabytes of RAM, and you can kill some of them or kill all of them. I don't really need that per se. I think that um, Android by itself does a pretty good job, but if you're into doing all that and into always being in control, you can have that. And then you also have, you know, the widgets that we have with uh, standard Android. We, we've seen these before, analog clock, Facebook music, NASCAR, Pandora, picture frame, Search, Sprint TV, Sprint Football Live, we've seen all those already, and YouTube. Some of these are already on there. Now you can also, as you saw, add shortcuts and folders. So if you want to add a shortcut to an application, you can click that. Then you could do a bookmark, a contact, directions, music playlist, Gmail label, or settings. So let's just say you wanted to do an app. It's the same basic procedure for anything that you'd want, but you can just choose it. So let's say you wanted to add the browser. And then to remove, you just hold and drag. But a little bit of a quicker way to add uh, shortcuts, you just hold and click, and there you go. So I'll go ahead and remove that. So let's go back to the primary home screen here. So Sprint Zone was here by default. This basically just gives you all the Sprint news that you need about your account, help, suggested apps. You have the Marketplace email, voicemail, and calendar. I'll show you calendar. I don't think I have any calendar entries on here. Uh, but you can do it by month, by week. You can set the week. You can go by day. You can look at a list view. And it works in horizontal orientation as well. I don't have any of my calendars synced onto here. Um, and then the marketplace. We all know that that's how you can download applications. So let's just look at some of the other apps that we get here. All Share is pretty interesting. Basically what it allows you to do, and uh, you need to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. So I'm not even going to bother connecting to a Wi-Fi network. But basically what it allows you to do is look for shared folders on the network, and then you're actually able to stream that content from the network. So that's a pretty interesting feature, and you can see here that it just did it now. Uh, so you can play from the server, you can play a file on your phone on another player, or you can stream from the server and play it on another player using DLNA, I believe is the technology that it's called. Uh, Amazon MP3 to download MP3s. I'll just do some of the notable ones here. Camera. So you can open that up and you also have a like, dedicated shutter button right here. And you can tap to focus. It's really pretty simple and pretty easy to take a picture and then you just snap one, of course. So let's go back. So Facebook Layer, which is an augmented reality application. Basically, it'll use your camera and pull up local uh, things around you. You can set it for restaurants. You can set it for hotels, whatever you're looking for. Gallery is your gallery of things that you've taken. Media Hub is kind of interesting. Apparently, Samsung is going to be offering sort of like an iTunes thing where you can rent by and download your favorite TV shows and movies on Galaxy S devices. Unfortunately, because this Epic 4G hasn't launched yet, uh, officially, I can't really show you that because it's coming soon. But it's an interesting thing that'll be coming. You have memos, music so you can listen to your music, your files so you can browse that. And I've downloaded some of these apps quick for video chat, Google Talk. I've showed you some of these. Sprint Hotspot has its own video that I've done. Voicemail, Think Free Office. So when you get, uh, you know, Docs or PowerPoints, Excel, whatever, you can open it up in Think Free Office. Think Free Mobile. 
Um, then you can do updates or look at your docs, whatever. Um, so the last thing I just want to show you is the browser because, uh, or one of the last things I want to show you is the browser. So we just go into the browser here and you have some settings, new window, bookmarks, windows. So this is their tabbed user interface. So I have three tabs open right now and we can open, they call them windows. Uh, so we can quickly switch over to my um, website here. So let's say we wanted to watch this video that's uploaded to Michael Uncensored. Apparently the video can't be played for some reason, that's weird. Uh, usually videos will play in the app. And then we can switch over to YouTube. This is actually another video that I did. This one will, eh, I don't know why they're not playing. They usually always play. Maybe I need to reload the page. Or maybe it's because one of the apps in the background is. It was because it needed to be reloaded, yeah. So here's a video on calling from Gmail, and you can adjust the volume. And if you want it to play in high quality, you have other options too. You can share it, you can comment on it, rate it, details. You also have more so you can flag it, whatever, but if you want to watch in high quality, that's how you do it. So that's that. So the last thing I just want to show you before I leave you today is the settings, just some choices that you have. Um, so the first thing I like is let's go to about phone. You can go to you can check for system updates right over the air, status, your phone number, signal strength, etc. But I think an interesting thing to look at is battery use. You can see uh, how long you've been since it's unplugged. So right now, 18 hours, and it shows you what's taking up most of your battery life. You can look at search. So you can choose what to search on your phone. So for instance, if you wanted to search YouTube, you could check it. But if you, for some reason, didn't want to search contacts, you could unselect that as well. And you can also uh, make tweets searchable, search Internet Movie Database right from the Universal Search. It really is expandable, and it's really pretty cool that the Universal Search, which comes built into this device, can be expanded with different apps and search settings. And sound and display will be the last thing we look at. So you can turn it on silent mode, media volume, you can change that, system volume, pulse notification light, haptic feedback display settings, screen timeout, brightness, animation, power saving mode. This is pretty cool. Um, so besides just adjusting uh, by analyzing image, it'll say, excuse me, it'll save power by analyzing image and adjusting LCD brightness. So not just by uh, the, pro the sensor up here for ambient light, but also depending on what apps you're in, it may adjust everything just so it works more efficiently. Finally, I just want to show you the notification manager on this device. So all you have to do is slide down, and it gives you some quick access to turning on or off GPS, 4G, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. But basically, new notifications come up here. So instead of on other operating systems such as the iPhone, where if you get a text message, it pops up, and if you decline to answer it, you're done, basically your notifications will come up here. So, and it pulls notifications from different apps as well. So if I get a text message, SMS, it'll come up in here. Emails will come up in here. Chat requests will come up. Uh, as you can see, I have a DM on Twitter eight replies on Twitter and four updates. So if I wanted to interact with one of these, let's say the updates, I just click on it. It'll open up the respective uh, application and it can see, and it'll show me that, okay, there's an update for Twitter, Google Maps, uh, Air Attack. So then to update, I can just go and click update. It's really uh, pretty simple. And finally, uh, just the last thing, let's just quickly show you backgrounding. It's really pretty simple. Let's say you opened up Pandora. And we'll do this quick to avoid any copyright issues. Um, but we can start playing it. And it's still playing. We can open up the browser and do anything. We can look at the live leaderboard for the Barclays today. We can see that Woods is only one shot behind, although he finished and the leader is only on the fifth hole. And as you can see here, there's a little Pandora icon up in the top. We just slide down. The same way that we looked at notifications, we can look at ongoing tasks. Click that, it'll open it right up, and then we can stop playing, and we're good to go. So, that's just a software tour of the Samsung Epic 4G for Sprint. Thanks for watching this video, and have a nice day.